In this video, I'm going to show you how we can download using the brand new download manager built in to Safari here in iOS 13. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, coming to you live from High Marsh Island. So you may hear some seagulls in the background there. And this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. Now, a very cool new feature here in iOS 13 is the download manager in Safari. So I'm here in Safari, and I've gone to freesound.org, which is one of my favorite free sample and loop libraries here online. And what we can now do is when we tap on a download button, like the download button in the bottom right here, what would happen in the past is it would just go to the view option here. So we wouldn't be able to download this file directly. You'd have to use a separate download manager or a different browser. What we can do now though, is we can actually tap on download and it will actually download that file. You can see up the top there in the top right corner, there is a little down arrow and a progress bar, which is super handy. If we tap on that one, we get a more detailed view. It downloads that file and there you can see that we've got an audio file there. It's 1.3 megabytes and this puts it into our files location in our files app in a special downloads folder. So let's jump over there and show you where this downloads to. So we'll change our apps, we'll come over here and we'll go back into our files location. Now here is your standard files app. You've got iCloud Drive on my iPhone, anywhere else that you may have. But if you keep scrolling down, what we now have is under favorites, we have a downloads folder here. If we tap on downloads, there it is. There is that file that I've just downloaded. And if we tap to play it, it's going to open and play the file. There it is, we can hit the play button. And there is our cool little uh, little loop that we may uh, want to use in a track. So we'll hit on done there. And what we can now do is actually bring this into anywhere else on our iOS device. So at the moment it's available on iPhone, it'll be available on iPad in just a couple of days as well as part of iPad OS. But let's jump over to GarageBand now and I'll show you how we can import this WAV file straight into GarageBand. So here I am in GarageBand on my iPhone. I'm going to tap Create Document to create a new track. We'll come over to our audio recorder and tap on that one. And then up the top here, we're going to tap on the track view just to go back to our tracks. Now, uh, we've got a bunch of loops in there. You can see in the top right corner because I've been doing a bunch of importing and, uh, and transferring of files. But what we can do is tap on that loop icon in the top right corner. And this is going to take us into our file import options. Now, we're here in our GarageBand file transfer folder which is our default folder here. But the good thing is down the bottom, you'll see we can browse items from the files app. So if we tap on that one, it's gonna bring us into our browser. We can now go back to our locations, go back to browse, go down to our downloads folder, and then tap on, you guessed it, the file that we've downloaded. This will bring it across into our GarageBand file transfer folder. Uh, now we have to find it. Uh, it was this one here. You do need to remember the name. So now we can just tap and hold and drag this into a project and drop it like that. However, you may have noticed here that I haven't done something first. This is a 130 BPM loop, and we need to set our project to 130 BPM for this to actually work. Because at the moment, if we, uh, let's just turn the volume down, because I know it's a loud loop. If we hit play, it's not gonna line up with our BPM, our beats per minute of our project. So we'll hit undo, and what we can do is go to our little spanner, or our little wrench icon in the top right corner, tap on tempo, drag this up, to 130. Then we hit done. And now if we do that same action again, we tap and drag and bring this loop in. Then now if we hit play, our cool little chip tune there is uh, sitting right on the beat. So this is cool because you can search for loops at any BPM and a lot of them will actually tell you if you go to something like freesound.org, you can then bring them in and you know they're gonna sit right on the beat if you set your project tempo. So let's just loop this, we'll tap it, we'll tap loop so that we've set up a loop here. There's a separate cooler way that we can bring files straight in here to GarageBand without going through that intermediate step. So let's show you that now. So we're gonna swap back over to our Safari. We'll come back over to here. Uh, let's just search for another loop here. So we'll go, uh, where we want some drums here. So drum loop, and we know we need it to be 130. So let's do drum loop 130, hit go, and see what we can find here on freesound.org. Uh, we'll drag down here, what have we got here? 
what about this one? Very generic, 130 drum loop dot wave. We'll tap on this one. I'm not gonna even preview it. Let's just trust that it looks like it's about right. Once again, we can tap on the download button here, the little yellow button, and that is going to download it. Here we go, do I wanna download it? Yes, I hit the download button. There it is up the top there with my download manager. It is downloading, it is good to go. So that is pretty cool, right? Now, we could do exactly what we did before, or what we can actually do is if we tap on this file here in our download manager, what you'll notice is in the bottom left corner, we have a share icon. Let's tap on that share icon and see what we can do. Well, we can do all of the cool things like sending it to different apps, or what's actually handy is we can copy it. So if we tap on that copy button up the top here, it has copied that audio to our clipboard now. And yes, you're probably ahead of me. What is cool is we can now paste this directly into any compatible audio app. So let's do that with GarageBand now. We're gonna scroll up and scroll across. Back to our GarageBand project, we're just gonna tap in some blank space here, tap on paste, and boom, there is our drum loop. How cool is that? I think that's a really handy feature here of the download manager to be able to share it directly from the download straight over to our project. So once again, we'll tap this, we'll tap it again, we'll loop this file. If it's going to let us, there we go, we'll tap loop. So now we have quickly built out a 130 BPM little cool retro loop here. Let's hit play on this one. Interesting sort of beat. Uh, let's just play that drum by itself. And bring back in our other loop. And from here, yeah, you can see that you can get some really unique sounds. Now, when you're using free sounds like these, check the licensing. Make sure that uh, you're not using commercial samples you can't use in your songs because you don't want to be releasing other people's work. But why don't we now just uh, show you how quickly and easily we can add in a couple of additional sounds here and start making this loop our own. So let's hit the plus button down the bottom here and this is screaming out for one of my favorite alchemy synth sounds here. So we're gonna come in here to the alchemy synth and we'll tap in the top left and I do like epic cloud formation, but what I want is I want my lead here and I think this one is the chip tune lead. It's I think this could sound cool with this. Let's just hit record and play a little bit of a, a little bit of a melody in here, shall we? Probably wasn't the perfect, and in fact, I really didn't like the first half of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna edit this down to just the second half, and then we'll bring it back to the front here. We will then loop this out, and let's just take a listen to what we've created here. There you go. I know that you would play that uh, video game from the 80s that had that retro vibe. So there you go. In just a couple of minutes, you can see that we've used a very cool new feature that we have here, the download manager here in Safari, to be able to download these files, to be able to either copy them and paste them across, or have them there in your GarageBand transfer folder, ready to bring into your GarageBand projects. I hope you found this useful. It's one of my favorite new features. There's two other videos about some other iOS 13 features down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you on the next video.